All right. So going over last night's homework, first we had the M&Ms. I really encourage you to copy all this down completely so that you understand how simple interest works. There's four basic components to it. You've got your interest, your principal, your rate, interest rate, and the amount of time. And so as you're reading through a problem, you should set up every one of those variables and plug in the piece of information that you know. So this is how I would usually go about doing that. I would just do the I, the P, the R, and the T. And as I'm reading through, Teresa invested $1,425. So that's going to be the principal, $1,425. In a savings account at her local bank, the bank pays simple interest of 3.5%. So 3.5%, and then it's a good idea to convert that immediately by dividing this by 100, since that's what percent means out of 100 or divided by 100. So when you do that, it moves the decimal two places to the left, so that becomes 35 thousandths. And then for a time period, it's annually, which means per year, for four years. So we're gonna put four years. So for this particular problem, we're trying to find the interest. That's the variable that we don't have any information for. So we're gonna plug everything into I equals PRT, where we leave the I there, but the P becomes the 1425, the R becomes the 35 thousandths, and the time is four. I generally start by multiplying and find out what is 3.5% of 1425. Once I know what that is, then I'll multiply it times the four. And I think that's might be what this is. So I'm gonna use the calculator function, which I'm not sure if you can see, 1425 times 0 0.035. Oh no, it turns out it's, it's $49.88 if you round it up per year, but this covers all four years. So that's that number times four. So multiply all three of these numbers together and then that amount is going to be the amount of the interest. If they want to find out what the new amount is, you'll have to add that to the original uh, amount that you deposited for a total of $1,624.50. So by putting this money aside and not spending it, you kept it, right? So it's kind of like savings. Um, but then by investing it, I guess it's more than kind of like savings. It is savings. So by investing it, you allowed your money to work for you. So just by letting it sit in an account that accrued interest over time, you made an additional almost $200. That's how retirement funds grow. That's how savings grows and, and makes you more money over time. All right, so Ida wants to buy a car, but she currently does not have enough money. The car she wants costs $2,500. So that will be the principal. She could borrow the $2,500 at 4%, so we're gonna change that to its decimal equivalent, and pay the total after 12 months. And is this a monthly? Yes, it's a monthly interest rate. So the 12 months would go here. We'll put the 12 here. And now you just multiply those three numbers together. Turns out that is $1,200. That's a high interest rate per month. You're paying a lot of money back after one year. I'm not sure that's a very good deal. Um, this is the total amount that you'd have to pay after a year. She could borrow $2,500 weekly at an interest rate of 1%, but since there's generally four weeks in a year or in a, in a month, I'm wondering if that isn't going to be close to the same. Let's see. Um, so it turns out there's 52 weeks in a year. So 1% times 2,500 times 52 ends up being 1,300. So there aren't exactly four weeks in a month. If there were, there'd be 48 weeks in a year, but turns out a year is 52 weeks. So this ends up being more expensive. So the 4% monthly is actually a better deal than the 1% weekly. You end up only having to pay back $3,700 instead of $3,800. The Jones family wants to remodel their kitchen. They have saved $23,000 in the last two years, and the contractor wants $40,000. So that means they have to come up with $17,000. They can borrow this difference uh, at a monthly interest rate of 
And so that's going to be their 2%. And what if they pay the loan off in six months, how much will they end up paying? They'll end up paying 17,000 times 2% times six is $2,040. So that's interest alone. When you add that to the 17,000, it ends up being $19,000 and change, $19,040 uh, that they would have to pay back in order to pay this contract for the 40,000. So it actually cost them 42,000, I guess, in the end, when you, when you think about that extra interest. The electronics department is having a no sales tax sale. In addition, all the items are 25% off. So remember I was talking about multipliers. If you wanna find the amount of the discount, take 25%. If you wanna find out how much they're gonna pay, you take 75%. Why is looking at a music player that normally is $120? He has $95 to spend. Does he have enough money? Well, you could look at this diagram and you could figure it out, or you could set up one of these guys as well. And so the total is $120. And if you break it up into one quarter sections, this is your 25% for each one. What is 25% of uh, 120? What's a fourth of 120? That would be 30. So after you take that three times, one quarter is 30. So three quarters would be the amount that you'd have to pay would be 90. So he has $95, that means he's got enough money. Now, would he still have enough money if he paid 5.5% sales tax? Well, if you find out what 5.5% of 90 is, then you'll see that it's $4.95 and he just barely has enough money. He would still have a nickel left over after everything was done because he'd pay $90 for the uh, music player plus an additional four. 95 for the tax to make that $94.95. Here we have some problems that we're going to solve. I'll just work through each one of them quickly. If we add two fifths to each side here, x minus two fifths plus one and three fifths. When you add two fifths to three fifths, you get five fifths. So one and five fifths is going to be the same as two. So x has to be equal to two. Here, you divide each side by five. What is zero divided by five? Well, it's zero. And here, we're gonna add 14.6 to each side. Make certain when you're adding these decimal numbers that you line up your decimal. And I'm gonna put in a zero there to put it in my hundredths place. So this is a six, that is a 15, that's seven, there's a one. So your answer is 17.56. Marty is saving money to buy a new computer. He received $200 for his birthday and saves $150 a week. Does this situation represent proportional relationship? No, it does not. It is not. If, if we said Y was equal to 200 times X, where X is the number of weeks, this would be proportional. because you'd be saving $200 per week. But actually, I think I got this a little bit wrong. I think it was 150 per week that he was saving. So that would be proportional. But the fact that he started off with $200 means that after one week, he's actually gonna have 350. And after two weeks, he's gonna have 500. And if he spends no time saving money from his paycheck, it would still be $200 that he would have from this birthday present. So zero, zero does not apply to this situation. It is not proportional. Here we've got a box plot. Remember, after plotting everything, you got your minimum and your maximum, your median and your two quartiles. These four sections represent 25% of the total data. So based on the plot, what percent of the students watch more than 10 hours? That would be this section right there, which is 25%. Based on the plot, what percent of the uh, students watch less than five hours? That would be this grouping right here, which is 50%. Can Elvin use the plot to find the mean? No, you have to know all the individual numbers and we don't know those from the box plot. So the answer is no. And can we use the box plot to find the median? Absolutely, that is a key component of the box plot. The median is this number right there. It's gotta be the number five, it's the number in the middle. 
Is that our last problem? I'm not quite sure what number this goes to. And that is the last problem. All right. Hopefully you did well on this homework. Uh, now tomorrow, I don't, I'm, I'm losing track of how the time works. Uh, just keep at it. Uh, make sure you do those check for understandings at the end of each lesson, just to see if you're getting the concepts. It's not counting for your grade. It's not counting against your grade. It's just information for you. So I'm putting those up for a reason so you can check and see if you're understanding the basic ideas of the lesson that I teach. Please, uh, please take those and then I can see which students are getting it, which students are struggling a little bit, and then I can maybe send you more information if you're consistently struggling on these new concepts. All right, take care.